almost 100 years ago, on a tiny little island in the states of Florida, lived a famous writer named Ernest Hemingway. Hemingway was a cat lover who had heard tales about mysterious sailor cats with so many toes. One day, a sailing captain told Hemingway the reason why six-toed cats were common crew members on many ships. They were thought to be a good omen, a symbol of good luck, or simply better mouse catchers. The captain gave Hemingway a white six-toed kitten as a present, which he named Snow White. Developing extra fingers or toes is a genetic anomaly called polydactyly. Polydactyly can be present not only in cats, but also in other animals, like humans. The same way changing words in a tale or story might lead to different endings, specific mutations in the DNA change its letters and cause polydactyly. Hemingway raised Snow White to become a beautiful cat that lived with not seven dwarfs but six toes on its paws. And Key West, that tiny little island, soon started to see more and more six-toed cats. Was it sorcery or some sort of spell? Absolutely not. Snow White, it turned out that Snow White was actually a male kitten and, and, and that spread the polydactyl mutation all over the island. But how did polydactyly spread so quickly? Animals have two copies of their genes, one coming from the mother, one coming from the father. Generally, when one is broken, we use the good one. However, polydactyly is dominant, which means that inheriting the mutation, the polydactyl mutation from one of the two progenitors would be enough to develop the polydactyl phenotype, more fingers or toes. In order to try and identify the genetic cause of polydactyly in that island, researchers sequenced the DNA of Snow White's polydactyl descendants. They couldn't find any mutation previously associated with polydactyly. Instead, they discovered that all the polydactyl cats presented the same but brand new mutation. The mutation became known as the Hemingway mutation because the family tree of the cats could be traced all the way back to that white six-toed cat that a captain gave once to Hemingway. The Hemingway mutation in cats is equivalent to human mutations that cause polydactyly as well. They turn on a very important gene on additional regions of the embryonic hand or paw, developing extra fingers. Developing extra fingers, it's a gain of function. It's not that the gene is broken, it's that the mutation confers new properties to that gene. In the case of polydactyly, these new properties create hand differences that can have no clinical impact or impair hand function. This is not a fairy tale, and genetics helps us understand true stories. If not, ask our Snow White, who ate no apple nor was destined to disaster, but lived happily and polydactyly ever after. Jesus, well done. Um, I love a story, love a bit of Hemingway in there. Um, I wonder where are we with this research today? I mean, Hemingway was a while ago. Where are we today? Yeah, so in polydactyly, there are many or several different genes that can develop the phenotype. So the, the developing of, or ex, of extra fingers. There are several genes, although each of them is, uh, is able to... to to produce, to create the phenotype, the, the developing of the extra fingers. We now know that there is a regulatory element, so it's not a gene, it's something that controls the gene, that is one million base pairs away in the DNA, so this is really far away and this is really new that we know that something from really far away can control a gene. So in this case, uh, the polydactyl mutation that is found in cats, it's quite helpful because it's equivalent to human mutations that can be developed as well. So this is very useful in order to diagnose people because when we have polydactyly, when someone shows polydactyly, it can, it, it can be only uh, having polydactyly or be the consequence of something more syndromic, so having more other symptoms. So it's very important in diagnosis to isolate, which is whether it is something isolated with, with which can have severe or milder um, consequences or something more general that we need to classify and treat uh, properly. Thank you so much Jesus. My question is you mentioned that for the cats there might have been an advantage in having six toes for catching mice. 
Is there an advantage to humans in polydactyly? Well, um, humans having polydactyly can have the same advantage or the same disadvantage as someone having blue eyes. So it's a change. Uh, it's a it's a variation, a, a new trait or a different trait from from common or from the majority of the population, uh, but giving an advantage or, or, or not is not like the the main the main thing sometimes when it's really severe and and it can impair like hand mobility so people can have some difficulties but uh, it, i would say a mild polydactyl phenotype is not either an advantage or a disadvantage yes i, I do have also a question actually i do have some cases of polydactyly in close families uh, so, but I, I, I was wondering how, how frequent it is in humans. So I, I don't know exactly the frequency, but it's a rare, uh, I, would, I wouldn't like to say disease, a, a rare trait. Um, so because in, in genetics, we normally tend to forget uh, about the medical thing. So we focus on the, on the term and we sometimes say genetic disease because it's something genetic, but doesn't really mean that it's a disease. So I, I really think we should be careful with, with the nomenclature there. Uh, it's a rare, it's a rare trait. So um, it's not something frequent, but if we sum up, um, sum up, no, add up everyone that is having polydactyly, we have many polydactyl people. So it's, it's unfrequent, but uh, we are a group or they are a group.